So there's been quite a lot in the news today that has been rather annoying me. And I don't see the point in wasting any time, so let's get right into it. I'm going to use the start of this video to compare two articles about the exact same subject. The first one being the Guardian article. Nigel Farage attacks Harry and Meghan, jokes about overweight Queen Mother. Exclusive. Brexit party leader labels Duke of Sussex terrifying while disparaging Queen Mother at Sydney CPAC speech. Yes, Nigel Farage has indeed done something and the Guardian are straight on it with the classic emotive language you would expect. So let's begin. Nigel Farage has derided the Duke and Duchess of Sussex for their irreverent social justice and environmental campaigns while abusing Prince Charles and describing the late Queen Mother as an overweight chain-smoking gin drinker in an incendiary speech to an Australian right-wing political conference. The amount that's wrong with that entire paragraph is beyond me. I mean, they don't even say what he said about Prince Charles, he just said he abused him. And for all I know, the things he said about the Queen's mother could be completely out of context. Let's compare it to the Times article named Nigel Farage mocks Prince Harry and Meghan at Australian conference, which is a much more objective title. Nigel Farage has mocked the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, claiming that Prince Harry's popularity has fallen off a cliff since he married Meghan Markle. He also described the late Queen Mother as a slightly overweight chain-smoking drinker during a speech at a meeting in Australia in which he lamented the prospect of the Prince of Wales inheriting the throne because of his concerns about climate change and the environment. And this is why I have a series called Laughing at the Guardian. They're not objective. If there is anything bad to say about Nigel Farage, they will go the extra mile to make sure that you hear everything bad about him and make sure that it's framed in a way where you should hate him. Whereas when it comes to the times, just from the first paragraphs alone, you can see that it is much more objective and more just trying to get the facts to you. And that is why they earn every penny and The Guardian has to beg for it. So let's keep reading both from The Guardian. The Brexit party leader was laudatory about the Queen, an amazing, awe-inspiring woman. We're bloody lucky to have her, but abused her son, grandson and mother. See how they just randomly put the word abused in there when all he's doing is mocking and pointing things out such as when it comes to a son when it comes to charlie boy and climate change oh dear oh dear oh dear her mother her royal highness the queen's mother was a slightly overweight chain smoking gin drinker who lived to 101 years old all i can say is charlie boy is now in his 70s may the queen live a very very long time so he's pointing out that the queen's mother had some bad habits that were fairly unhealthy and she managed to live to 101 is pointing this out because it seems that that means the Queen's family has this inhuman ability to live with incredibly bad habits. And the Queen appears to not have these, so we'll probably live past 101, which is good news to not get Charles in charge of the throne. In short, he's using hyperbole, but for some reason the Guardian has all of a sudden become monarchists. I will move back to the Times article because it is a lot more objective and therefore better for my video. At the event, he derided Harry and his wife over recent reports they wanted no more than two children to reduce their impact on the environment. Here was Harry. Here he was, this young, brave, boisterous, all-male, getting into trouble, turning up at stag parties, inappropriately dressed, drinking too much and causing all sorts of mayhem. And then a brave British officer who did his bit in Afghanistan. He was the most popular royal of the younger generation that we've seen for a hundred years, Mr Farage reportedly told a gathering in Sydney on Saturday. That was closed to journalists. And then he met Meghan Markle and it's fallen off a cliff. We've been told in the past that Meghan and Harry will only have two children. We're all completely ignoring the real problem the Earth faces, and that's the fact that the population of the globe is exploding, but no one dares talk about it. Whether Harry has two kids is irrelevant, given there are now 2.6 billion Chinese and Indians on this Earth, he said in a speech that was recorded and obtained by The Guardian. It's funny that, because The Guardian says about that particular fact that The Guardian has heard a recording of part of Farage's speech in which the Brexit party leader is laudatory about the Queen while abusing her relatives. While not on the recording, other media outlets have reported that Farage describes Harry as the Prince of Wokeness. Guardian Australia has spoken to the sources who said they had heard the comment, but others who said they weren't sure or that they have not heard it. So there you go. They don't actually say that they were handed this recording, it's just that they heard part of it. I'm going to trust the Times, ironically. 
and assume when they say they have heard it, it means that they had an informant who gave them the recording. It wouldn't be the first time something like that has happened, just look at Boris Johnson. But I think you understand the point of this entire article. The point of The Guardian is to tell you hate Nigel Farage because he says mean things about the royal family, whereas the Times are just saying he has mocked the royal family in a speech at a right-wing conference in Sydney. But it's not stopped the woke brigade from getting on a hate bandwagon. David Lammy posted on Twitter to lay off Megan, you delicious toad. And then it was up to Julia Hartley Brewer to point out that David Lammy, who objects to any human being called vermin, is the same David Lammy who happily calls Farage a toad. She's just wondering if it is actually the same person. And it, of course, is because Lammy is a hypocrite. I just find it amazing how the people who seem to hate Britain the most are the first ones to defend the royal family as soon as Nigel Farage says anything bad about them. It's amazing. But that's enough talking about the royals for one day. I can only last about six minutes doing it. So let's move on to another illiberal story, and that is Caroline Lucas calls for emergency female cabinet to block No Deal Brexit. Green MP urges 10 top female politicians to form cabinet of national unity to deliver a fresh referendum. And I do want to point out at this point that she has made an Guardian opinion piece on this subject, and we are going to go through it on Saturday night, probably about half past eight, so I will hope to see you there. The Green MP Caroline Lucas has thrown down the gauntlet to 10 high-profile female politicians over blocking a no-deal Brexit, proposing a cabinet of national unity, including Labour's Emily Thornberry, the Liberal Democrat leader Joe Swinson, and the former Conservative Cabinet Minister Justine Greening to seek legislation for a fresh referendum. In an extraordinary proposal, that will be viewed with scepticism by rival parties. Lucas offered to broker a deal with female MPs from all the main political parties in Westminster, as well as the SNP's leader, Nicola Sturgeon. Oh God, I would love to see her reasoning for this. Lucas, the former Green Party leader, who is a party's only MP, wrote, It is hard to remember a moment in my lifetime when Britain faced a greater crisis. A coup led by a small group of right-wing libertarians is all but complete, as the Vote Leave team has been reassembled and taken control of 10 Downing Street. They are set upon implementing the most extreme no-deal version of Brexit, and most terrifyingly, we have run out of time to stop them. I do love the rationale that because a democratically elected bunch of cabinet ministers are in power to put in a no-deal Brexit, that means it's a coup and we ourselves have to replace this cabinet with an all-women one in what someone could describe as a political coup. But it's to do more democracy with a second referendum. Yeah, we've been through that argument. No, the vote was final. We have already had the vote. Please implement it. Lucas said that she believed a cabinet of women from across the political spectrum would be best placed to set up an emergency cabinet, which she said would work for reconciliation rather than fight new political battles. Why women? Because I believe women have shown they can bring a different perspective to a crisis, are able to reach out to those they disagree with, and cooperate to find solutions, she wrote. It was two women who began the peace people movement during the worst of the troubles in Northern Ireland, and it was two women who were key to the signing of the Paris Agreement on climate, difficult, intractable problems, have found the beginning of resolution thanks to the leadership of women. Any realistic climate scientist would not say that the Paris Agreement was exactly a great thing to sign. It will kill economies if people actually stick to it, and that's why no government actually does. But yes, no one is saying that women can't be the forefront of a movement. I think what people have a problem with here is that you are actively stopping men from being part of this due to your progressive credentials needing an upboost. But even the women involved aren't entirely on her side. Subri, who was the one who was called a Nazi by that random yellow vest guy, although she says she agrees that we need to stop no deal Brexit, she also says, while I agree that women can do things in a different way, if you're trying to stop a no deal Brexit, then the key thing is to bring people together, not divide them on the basis of their gender. And according to this BBC article, Liz Savile Roberts, who is one of 10 politicians urged by the Green MP Caroline Lucas to oust PM Boris Johnson, has said she was not entirely comfortable that only women will be involved to break the deadlock, despite being on the side of breaking the deadlock. But, of course, the woke brigade had quite a thing to say about this. Owen Jones says, Can you explain why Yvette Cooper, who is a backbencher who isn't on record anywhere backing a new referendum, represents Labour leadership, while Diane Abbott, who is Shadow Home Secretary, and who backs a new referendum, doesn't? 
why have you just selected white women? Yes, once you play the game of identity politics, I'm afraid you are always a loser. It doesn't matter to Owen Jones that she is outright discriminated against every single man on the planet. It's now a problem because she implicitly was racist for not choosing a black woman, no matter how stupid she acts. Clive Lewis, an MP, also said, Calls for emergency female cabinet to block no deal Brexit. I think this is a very interesting proposal. One genuine question, where are all the BAME women? Which is basically just another word to say non-white. And Caroline Lucas actually decided to reply to this and said, The list of women came about because they compromised the leadership, deputy leadership of the relevant parties, groupings, nations of the UK. But I completely agree with you. It absolutely needs to be open out further. And I would love Hackney Abbott to be involved, which is Diane Abbott's Twitter handle. I'm afraid it's too late, Ms Lucas. You have already lost the identity politics game and every type of apology you come forward with will never be enough. You are now under the death grip of identity politic players. Congratulations, you are a white woman who only chose white women and the fact you didn't choose a single man doesn't matter at all. So there you have it. In a single day, the UK, and the political aspect of the UK anyway, was totally taken over by the woke left again because Nigel Farage said a few jokes at a right-wing conference in Australia, which is halfway across the planet, and Caroline Lucas decided to oppress all men with her all-female cabinet, and no one cared because instead there were no black women on her cabinet fantasy football team. That's my modern politics in a nutshell, people. This is what I have to live with. I'd much rather talk about actual policy with people, but we've got this massive thing about Brexit and all the stuff about identity politics that I have to deal with instead. That's why my channel's here, people, just to point out how stupid it is. But that's all the stupidity, fortunately, that I had for today. So, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, goodbye.